Is Britain ashamed of its colonial past? The modern-day Britain is an island in the eastern end of the North Atlantic Ocean, comprising of three separate nations or regions, England, Scotland, and Wales. Despite their size, Britain had occupied and colonized a geographical area, multiple times its own, and has influenced the world for around two centuries. The British colonization made the island nation, which was nowhere near an economic power in the early 18th century, rise up beyond imagination, with money and power, during the next 200 years. Britain achieved this wealth through treachery, ruthlessness, loot and plunder, with absolutely no sense of fairness, or justice to humanity. The idea of human rights, as it is understood today, never popped up in anybody's mind, during the entire period of colonization, and the British authorities or their subordinates, were rewarded based on the level of brutal exploitation, on their colonies and their subjects. Britain justified their actions with the simple belief, that they were entitled to a better life, and the toil, blood and sweat of their colonial subjects, were due to their inferior existence. Every method of ensuring that the colonial subjects will stay ill-equipped, both in knowledge and wealth, were designed during the British control. The colonial subjects were made to stay extremely poor, except for the chosen few, with high level of taxation, and other unethical and regressive methods, of grabbing their wealth. The British colonies were made to stay underdeveloped, and infrastructure was only built to help the British transport their looted wealth, out of the countries they controlled. At the cost of the well-being of the masses, the British authorities stayed in massive bungalows, and palatial houses. The local culture, traditions, clothing, and language were made to look inferior to the British way of living, which the British colonizers utilized to justify the subservient treatment that was given to the locals. In fact, the British were very interested in pushing an education system that made the locals never attain useful knowledge, but to push them into clerical jobs, serving under the British masters. The British then turned around and pointed out to their colonial subjects, how the British language, namely English, and their superior intellectual capacity, was the reason why they won them over. However, the British Empire was formed entirely with divisive, exploitative, brutal, suppressive, inhuman methods, far devoid of any intellectual superiority. In simple terms, colonialism is a dogma, that allowed the British to genuinely believe that it's their right, duty, and God-given gift, to rule over their colonies, rooted on racism, prejudice, and intellectual depravity. In fact, the British were so drunk with pride, that they believed their colonies cannot govern themselves, and often cited it to be the reason why independence was a bad idea, to their uncivilized colonies. Some of the celebrated British leaders were racists and supremacists, including Winston Churchill, who famously supported the slogan, Keep England White, and was wantonly responsible to the countless deaths, due to his callous attitude of depleting the food grains of Bengal, during World War II, and letting the Indians die. The celebrated British novelist and poet, Rudyard Kipling, known for his belief that the white man carried the burden of saving the world, and other racist views on white purity. As George Orwell wrote in 1942, Kipling was a jingo imperialist, morally insensitive, and aesthetically disgusting. However, Kipling is still one of the most adored writers in Britain. The absurd idea of how the British superiority and exceptionalism, needs to be enforced through indoctrination, can be seen in the writings of Joseph Salter, a well-known Christian missionary in London. His job was to evangelize and anglicize immigrants, including African blacks and Asians, by drilling the idea of British superiority, over their own tradition, culture, religion, language, and lifestyle. The cultural subjugation, was one of the ploys that was employed throughout the British Empire. On the economic front, the British occupied the colonies at a time, when the world was moving from an agrarian economy, into an industrialized one. Due to the fact, that the colonies were under British rule, these countries never saw the transition to the new economy. India was the largest of the British colonies, a prized possession of the British Empire, and was referred to as their crown jewel. 
India was also the worst sufferer of colonization. During their rule in India, the British took thriving industries, like textiles, shipbuilding, and steel, and destroyed them completely, by imposing taxes, import tariffs, as well as forcing their exports and products on the back of the Indian consumer. On top of that, the British didn't leave the agrarian economy to survive well either. They abused and pillaged the agriculture sector of India, by forcing them to grow crops, like opium, against their wishes, which hardly benefited the farmers, but served just the British interests. The share, that had to be paid to the British by the farmers remained high, irrespective of flood or famine, leading to several revolts in India. The revolts like the Indigo Rebellion, Champaran Struggle, Kada Peasant Revolt, the Bardali Movement, etc., were crushed with such cruel punishments, to send a message, not to violate the British orders, no matter how harsh they may be. Now, let's answer the question we had posed at the title. Is Britain ashamed of its colonial past? According to the YouGov poll conducted in 2016, which is one of the few scientific polls, only 21% of Britons believe that their colonialism is something to regret, but 44% of Britons believe it's something to be proud of, and the rest think it's neither good nor bad, or have not expressed any opinion at all. What appears so obvious to an impartial observer, is not so, to the British eye. How could this be? A good many British expressed ignorance, about the atrocities committed by the British Empire, on their colonial subjects, since they've only read about the Empire's impressive conquests, as well as the betterment of human conditions, that supposedly happened, during the British rule. And even among those who have studied colonization in depth, some people assert confidently, that the British Empire has been a force of good. Let's hear some of the British arguments. First and foremost, the British claim is that they improved the life of the colonial subjects, through better medical care, education, and railways. As we have seen, the British destroyed the traditional education system, and forced them to learn minimally, just enough for them to turn into human calculators, and clerks, assisting the British, in their subjugation and looting. New railway lines were created during the imperial rule, but the main purpose was for the transportation of goods to the ports, to be shipped back to Britain. And lastly, about medical care, it was only available for the British subjects, and a few locals of British's choice. The second British claim is that the British rule is too complex to comprehend, and the good and bad cannot be analyzed, using today's parameters. This claim is a deliberate distortion to undermine any factual analysis, based on the published records, and writings. Simply put, it makes an argument, any event in history can't be understood, if you have not lived during that period, which means every historical error should be condoned, and history should never be part of any discussion. Another claim of the British is, many British intermarried with their colonizers, followed their traditions, and were not as prejudiced, as it appears. This claim is blatantly false as well. The percentage of such people who married or followed the local traditions was very low, because of the taboo that existed about interracial marriages, or appearing with local clothing. If you have followed British history, how the usage of the terms the English gentleman, rose up in value over the years, to mean courteous, and well-groomed, to say how any dilution of that style or culture, would be considered uncivilized. It was more common for a British man to have mistresses than wives, and most of the interracial kids were born outside of a legal marriage. Many of the other claims are conjectures, and biased views, due to their prejudiced notion, that the countries Britain colonized were not advanced before the British Empire's arrival. Let's take the case of India again. India used to have 25% of the world's GDP, before the British established their foothold. By the time they left, India's GDP was only 3% of the world. It's estimated Britain looted more than $45 trillion, of today's equivalent, and pushed India back by three centuries. Let me give you an idea, what a vital role India played in world economics, before the British arrived. During the 16th and 17th centuries, all nations that had started building ships, 
established trading agencies, and all of them were set up with India as a priced destination for trade, like the British East India Company, the Dutch East India Company, the French East India Company, Danish West India Company, Dutch West India Company, Swedish West India Company, and a lot more. It appeared the whole world revolved around India back then. After India became a colony, time stayed still for India for most part, while the Western world advanced in science, technology and economics. Most sins of the past, like slavery in the US, apartheid in South Africa, Nazism in Germany, fascism in Italy, gross mistreatment of the Aborigines in Australia, etc., have all been easily accepted as indefensible, and past immoral behavior, and not looked upon with pride, by the citizens of the respective nations. However, the British have failed to acknowledge colonialism, as one of the biggest sins in human history, and as we see, about 43% still take pride on that ignominious past, even as late as 2016. Thanks for watching.